The book of Acts, hallelujah, as you all know, I believe wholeheartedly we still be, should be acting like we're in the book of Acts. Amen. Hallelujah. The acts of the Holy Ghost through some of his apostles. Hallelujah. And the reason I say some of them, hallelujah, is because God is still doing his acts and his works and his miracles through people like me and you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The book of Acts chapter 2, verse 17, it says this, and it shall come to pass in the last days. Tell somebody, we're in the last days. Hallelujah. It shall come to pass in the last days, said God. I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. Hallelujah. Today, today I want to tell you it's time to dream again. Hallelujah. It says, it shall come to pass in the last days. Amen. Hallelujah. And I, see, I believe wholeheartedly we are in the last of the last days. Hallelujah. God says, I'll pour out of my spirit. Hallelujah. Upon all flesh. And your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Hallelujah. They'll speak my promises as though they believe them. Amen. Hallelujah. The difference between a proverb and a promise, hallelujah, is whether or not you believe it enough. Hallelujah to pray it. The difference between a proverb, a promise, and a prophecy is do you believe it enough to say it? Hallelujah. My sons, your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see Visions. Hallelujah. God has poured his spirit out so that we can see ourselves doing better. Amen. See ourselves. Hallelujah. Walking in the promises of God. Living. Hallelujah. In the favor of God. Can you see yourself blessed? Amen. Hallelujah. And it says, and your old men shall dream dreams. And it didn't hit me until one day how miraculous this statement is that your old men shall dream dreams. Because oftentimes, more times than not, when people reach a certain age or a certain stage in their life, they stop dreaming. Remember when you were kids? And somebody asks you, what did you want to be? What do you want to do when you grow up? And you would say, I want to be an astronaut. I want to be a surgeon. I want to be, and you name the biggest, largest, hardest task and goals possible. We told Jane to think big. And I remember we said, what do you want to be when you grow up? He said, I want to be an elephant. Because <laughs> that brother was thinking big. <laughs> <laughs> but at some point in life, oftentimes, if we're not encouraged, if we're not provoked, if we're not reminded, we stop dreaming. Miles Monroe, he says it often. He says the most, the richest place on the face of the planet is the cemetery. Because that's where most people take their potential. That's where most people take their promise. That's where most people take their ability. That's where most people take their dreams. But I dare say, then long before we go to the cemetery, our dreams do. Because we settle. We stop pushing, we stop reaching, we stop striving, we stop trying. We stop living and settle for existing. But I'm saying to you today, and we are in the last of the last days. And God has poured his spirit out on you for you to do this dream again. 
Amen. Amen. Dream again. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Dream again. Let's go somewhere. I'm going to go, well, it's a long reading. I'm going to just read it to you. Amen. But that whole beginning of that chapter, it tells of the birth of a new dispensation. Amen. In Christianity, or should I say in Jehovah worship, it was the birth of the church. And the Bible says that on the day of call, Pentecost, there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. And the place filled the whole temple. And cloven tongues fell upon each of the people in the sanctuary, and they began to speak with unknown tongues. Hallelujah. And the Bible says people around them heard it. But they didn't just hear it in the tongues that they were speaking. Everybody heard it in their own tongue. And some of my people said, well, what is this that everybody can hear this in their own language? There are all kind of people here gathered from all different ethnicities, all type of backgrounds, and we all hear them speaking the wondrous works of God. Amen. They were hearing preaching and prophesying right there in their own tongue, in their own language, so there's no reason they couldn't get it. There's no reason they couldn't understand it. There's no reason they couldn't comprehend the wondrous works of God. God translated it for them. Amen. But most of the people there say something ain't right. Rather than receiving and believing the wondrous words and works of God, they made excuses as to why it was that these people were preaching and prophesying something they didn't believe. They must be drunk with new wine. See, if you start to dream again, you'll get people that'll start to think you must be on something. <laughs> to think you can go back to school at 50, 60, 70. To think you can start a business this late in your career, to think that you might do something different. Some people think that you're out of your mind, but the fact of the matter is, hallelujah, I'm encouraging you to find your righteous mind and dream again. Amen? Amen. Amen. Because God has poured out his spirit upon us to be able to prophesy, to be able to see visions, and to be able to dream dreams. Peter was quoting from Joel chapter 2 when he read this, or when he said this. And in order to understand Joel chapter 2, you really got to read Joel chapter 1. And in Joel chapter 1, verse 1, it says, The Lord, the word of the Lord that came to Joel. Hear this, ye old men, and give ear. All ye inhabitants of, inhabitants of the land, have this been in your days? Or even in your father's days? Have you ever seen days like this? Have you ever seen a pandemic like this? Have you ever seen situations like this? Have you ever experienced the things that are going on right th like this? Tell your children of it. And let your children tell their children and their children another generation. This is what was going on in the days of Joel before God prophesied of what I just said. He said in that that which the palmer worm hath left hath the locust eaten. That which the locust left hath the canker worm eaten. That which the canker worm hath left hath the caterpillar eaten. And I guess it wasn't left after that. 
but they were going through such difficulties that it seemed like after one thing, here comes another thing, here comes another thing, here comes another thing. Yet in the midst of difficulty, God said, I'm going to do something. I'm going to pour out my spirit upon you and calls you to prophesy. Speak the promises of God, hallelujah, until they come to pass. I'm going to do something, hallelujah. I'm going to cause you to see vision, see yourself doing something more than what you're doing right now. I'm getting ready to do something. I'm going to cause you to dream dreams. Old men dream dreams. Seasoned women dream dreams. I want you to dream again. You know, a dream, a dream, you know, oftentimes we think we got to be sleeping to be dreaming. <laughs> but a dream. It's contemplating possibilities. What would you do if anything was possible? That's not a rhetorical question. As a matter of fact, I want you, if not in the service, sometime today, think about it. Write down two things you would do if anything was possible. But what's the purpose of that, preacher? The reason I ask you to write down and believe something you would do if anything is possible, because anything is possible. All things are possible to them that believe. All things are possible. Amen? Amen. The question is, do I believe it? The question is, do I believe it? In the book of Isaiah, I believe it's chapter 61, there's a question that's asked. As a matter of fact, there are two questions. Two questions. It's asked the question, who hath believed God's report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? And if you read the first chapter, of the book I just released, you know that the second question is answered by the first question. Who hath believed God's report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? The arm of the Lord is revealed to them that believe his report. Amen? Amen. Do I believe in the possibilities? Do I believe, hallelujah, that God can still cause a turnaround? Do I believe, hallelujah, that God can still, hallelujah, make me succeed and achieve and, and, and receive? Do I believe it? In order for me to dream again, i got to believe that all things are possible to them that believe all things are possible. Do you believe it? Hallelujah. you got to believe it. Amen. Hallelujah. Most people don't. Most people don't believe it. Amen. I wasn't going to go here, but the Bible talks about four different types of hearers. It says that there are four different types of hearers. They said there's one here that hears by the wayside. I call that the passive listener. This person, the word of God comes and it's like it falls by the wayside. Not paying attention, not actively listening, not trying to get what God says and not believing it. The second type of here, the Bible describes it like stony ground. Where on the surface it looks like topsoil. It looks like everything's good, but there's only so much earth and then there's nothing but hard rock. Because most people have been offended to the point that they just wait for a chance for something to go wrong for them. And then they say, I told you it wouldn't go work. 
The third type of hair, it describes as thorny ground that chokes the word. And it describes or explains that that's the type of hair that's polluted and overwhelmed and overcome by the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust for other things. So when the word of God comes to the first person, it doesn't even get in. The word of God comes to the second person, it gets in, but it doesn't get down, take root. The third type of here, this overwhelmed by the deceitfulness of riches, the lust for other things, and the cares of this world, the word of God doesn't come out doesn't come up and bear fruit because what do they say? They say what other people say and are focused on what other people are focused on. Cares of this world, deceitfulness of riches, and the lust for other things. Only one out of four people, the Bible says, gets the word of God and produces fruit. You gotta make it up in your mind. I'm one of the four. Amen. Amen. I believe in here we got a bunch of fours. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't know where the one, twos, and threes are. Hallelujah. But in here, we got a bunch of fours. Amen. Hallelujah. As a matter of fact, in here, we got a bunch of ones. Because I believe everybody in here is saying, I'm the one. I'm the one that's going to believe God's report. Who is the arm of the Lord going to be revealed to? It's going to be revealed to them that believe his report. Hallelujah. So you can dream. Amen? Amen? Amen. Why is it important to dream, preacher? Because dreams do five things. One, dreams, dreams direct you into your destiny. You need something to cause you to drive instead of drift. You need something that you believe is your goal, amen, hallelujah, instead of you coasting through life, letting other people direct you, letting other people assign to you what it is that you can do. You gotta have a dream. Dreams require patience with God's process, amen? So it teaches you how to wait. <laughs> I think I said it not long ago. Somebody said that the average, or should I say, the overnight success usually takes about 20 years to develop. <laughs> That's not to discourage you. That's just to let you know that something's going on behind the scenes. Something's happening when it looks like nothing's happening and God is aligning and choreographing and orchestrating things, hallelujah, when it seems like it's taking a long time, hallelujah, it's not because God has forgotten, hallelujah, it's only because things are falling in line, hallelujah, and that sometimes things take a long time, so just be patient, amen, amen. amen. Sometimes it's not that we need to be patient with God. Hallelujah. Sometimes we need to realize God is being patient with us. Hallelujah. Because you weren't ready for what you thought you was ready for. Amen. Hallelujah. Everybody thinks that they're ready for everything that they ask for. But the truth of the matter is, hallelujah, there's a maturity that needs to take place in me before God can give me what he wants me to have. Amen. Amen. And even the difficulties that I experience are developing me for what God has for me on the next level. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. E, expect setbacks. That's a negative message, preacher. No, what I'm telling you is expect some setbacks. 
The reason I tell you to expect it is so when it happens, it doesn't derail you. It doesn't cause you to fall out of the faith. It doesn't cause you to give up on your dreams when something happens. Hallelujah. That setback is probably a setup. Hallelujah. And it could be, amen, that God is only causing you to take a step back so you can make a quantum leap. Hallelujah. And go forward. So expect some things to go wrong sometime. Amen? And don't let that make you quit dreaming. Hey, dreams always bless other people. So if your dream is for a new pair of shoes that only you are going to wear, you ain't dreaming big enough. If your dream is not going to affect and bless somebody else, dream bigger. If you can answer your own prayers, dream bigger. Amen? Hallelujah. If you don't have to have faith in order to achieve and receive what you believe in for, you're not dreaming big enough. Tell somebody dream bigger. dream bigger. Hallelujah. Because your dream is supposed to bless somebody else. And dreams, as the deacon has prayed, make beauty from ashes. They cause strength to come from weakness. They cause mourning to turn into dancing. They cause, hallelujah, your test to become a testimony. They turn your mess into a message. Hallelujah. And they make it so God will use what you've been through. Hallelujah. To bless you. That's what dreams do. So don't stop dreaming. God has poured his spirit out upon you. Hallelujah. For you to keep on dreaming. Keep on believing. Keep on hoping. Keep on praying, keep on obeying, hallelujah, and keep on seeing God come through for you. Keep dreaming. Amen? Tell somebody, it's not too late. It's not too late. Amen? Hallelujah. It's not too late for you to pursue your dream. Amen? Hallelujah. I'm still believing, hallelujah, that one day I'll go and be speaking publicly based on books that I've written. I still believe it. I'm old enough to almost retire from my job. Amen. I'm talking about starting another one. Amen. But I still believe it. Amen. Hallelujah. I still believe it. You got to get something that you put before you like a goal, like an objective. Hallelujah, like a dream, and keep on believing. Amen? Amen. 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 Don't stop dreaming. Hallelujah. In order for you to keep on dreaming, keep on believing, keep on seeing yourself doing better, keep on prophesying, hallelujah, you got to watch what you hear. Let's go somewhere. Let's go to Mark's Gospel, chapter 4. I want the last part of your life to be better than the first. I want you to leave here having emptied your cup of all of your promise, potential, every dream. I want you to accomplish everything that God put on the inside of you. Hallelujah. If you weren't there on Wednesday night, we talked about the fact that we're fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen. Hallelujah. And we talked about what would make God say he fearfully made us. What would God be afraid of? He's afraid. Hallelujah. That we won't see everything that he put on the inside of you and me. He won't. We won't see our potential. When you open up, when I, I just, well, we just got a um, new iPad for church for me, amen? 
And whenever you get any type of new thing, the first thing that you see when you open up the box is an owner's manual. And when we open up the box and we find that there's an owner's manual, what do most of us do? <laughs> yeah, we, we, we don't need the owner's manual because I know what I'm doing. I know how to work this thing. Not realizing that within the owner's manual, it tells us everything, hallelujah, that the creator of the thing had in mind when he made it. Everything, hallelujah, that this thing can do. Everything. All of the options, all of the apps, all of the processes that come with the thing. Most of the time, we don't get the creator's mind to show us what the thing can do. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'm going to date myself, but you remember the VCRs? <laughs> remember you used to have deep VCRs? The VCRs, they could, they could, you could program them to record at a certain time. They, you could make it so that you can, you know, sometimes pick up TV antenna signals through it. They had all kind of options, most of them. But most of us, because we wouldn't pick up the owner's manual, we didn't even know how to set the clock. <laughs> our VCR, we couldn't record, no, we couldn't set it to record at a certain time because all of our VCRs was flashing 12. <laughs> We didn't bother to look at the manual. Well, God has given us a book called the B-I-B-L-E. Hallelujah. And he's given us his manual. Hallelujah. He's given us a way that he says, hallelujah, that he'll speak to us and cause faith to come. Hallelujah. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Hallelujah. He said, if you just come to church, hallelujah, I got a word for you. But we don't God to tell us what we have on the inside of us. I'm telling you, you got to make sure that you hear hallelujah, what God has written in his book and what God is saying through his preachers in his pulpit because the preacher is here for you. Amen? You got to take heed what you hear. Mark's Gospel, chapter 4, verse 24, it says this. And he said unto them, take heed what you hear. You got to watch what you hear. You got to watch what you're listening to. Right. Amen? Amen. Amen. With the measure that ye meet, it shall be measured to you, and unto you that hear shall more be given. You got to watch what you're listening to. Because it becomes something that you adhere to and it becomes your philosophy. It becomes your theology. It becomes how you think of you. It becomes what you believe about you. You gotta watch what you hear. Amen? Amen. I'm sure most of y'all remember my, my big sister Pam. Pam's favorite movie was The Wiz. How many DVDs did we buy of the Wiz? A lot. Because <laughs> she would take the movie around, have it in her purse everywhere, you know, in a sack. Yeah, she just carried it around everywhere. For those that don't know, my big sister, she had Down syndrome. Hey, Amen. She made everybody smile. But Pam had this DVD. She would take it everywhere. So periodically, she would break it. We had to get her another one. And she would keep watching it. One of the songs, one of the songs on this movie, The Wiz, was the Crow Anthem. Y'all remember that? <laughs> Where Michael Jackson was a scarecrow, and the crows had a way of keeping him up on the pole, telling him what he couldn't do, causing him to believe that his life was limited to what he was living. 
They even had him sing it. You can't win. You can't break even. You can't get out of the game. That's depressing. <laughs> you can't win. You can't break even. You can't get out of the game. That's what the devil's trying to tell you. As I'm telling you to keep dreaming, the devil's telling you you can't do better. You can't start over. You can't get past where you are. You can't become more that you than you have been. The devil is a liar. You were destined to win. And there's more in you than you give yourself credit for. Why do we stop dreaming and achieving and pursuing at 30, most people? You know? We graduate high school, then we go to college, then we get into our career or start whatever our business, and then we think, well, I'm just coasting from here. You got another 70, 80 years to go, and you talk about coasting. Amen? There's more in you. Don't listen to the voices that try to discourage you. But keep believing. Keep believing in your dreams. Amen? I say it oftentimes, but sometimes you got to in order to be able to hear the right thing, you got to talk to yourself. Yeah. Amen? You got to be the one to encourage you. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. I think about Joseph. I think about Joseph. The Bible said he had a dream and he told his brothers his dream of how he would one day be a ruler and overseer. And I often hear people say, well, he never should have told his brothers. He had to say it out loud for him to be able to hear it. Amen. Hallelujah. A dream unspoken dies unborn. Hallelujah. You got to speak it. You got to hear it. Hallelujah. And you got to encourage yourself to believe it so you can keep dreaming. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. You got to keep dreaming it. And don't let nobody tell you anything other than what you believe and what you're dreaming. You got to take heed how you hear it. Luke's Gospel, chapter 8, verse 18 says, Take heed, therefore, how ye hear. For whosoever hath to him shall be given, and whosoever hath not shall be taken, even that which he seemeth to have. You know, as a nurse, one of the things that they warn us against is called alarm fatigue. When you're in the ICU, in the ER, you hear a lot of bing, You hear a lot of things that are constantly going on, and it makes it so you eventually start to tune them out. And you get a preacher like me that'll come up here and tell you week after week, keep on believing, keep on trying, keep on doing, keep on receiving, keep on achieving, keep on, hallelujah, pursuing. And if you're not careful, You'll tune it out. Oh, it's just another word from heaven. That's <laughs> just Pastor Gadsden up there again. Talking about, I'm blessed. You can become desensitized to the fact that God created you to be fruitful, 
multiply, replenish, subdue, have dominion, pursue, achieve, accomplish, receive. Hallelujah. You can become desensitized. Hallelujah. That God created you in his image and in his likeness. He fearfully and wonderfully made you. Hallelujah. And the thing that he made when he made you was marvelous. You can become desensitized to the fact that there's greater potential in you because the greater one lives on the inside of you. You can become desensitized to the fact that God's always got you on his mind and what he wants for you is better. And if God's not willing to settle for just blessing you a little bit, what'd you say, Deacon? God can do more. Hallelujah. Whatever God has done, God can do more. Don't get stuck in what God did. Hallelujah. Because God is still doing. God can do more. Hallelujah. If God's not willing to settle, why should I be? I'm going to keep on dreaming. I'm going to keep on pursuing. Hallelujah. Because I want people to see God working through me. Not so they can say, look at Jerry. But so they can see, say, look at what the Lord has done. This is the Lord's doing. And it's marvelous in my eyes. I'm going to keep on dreaming. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. And he has anointed me to do some things. God never anoints us to do nothing. He anoints us to do something. And like Caleb said, as my strength was, as my faith was, when I was young, so is it now. Give me my mountain. Give me my marriage. Give me my next level degree. Give me the business that you put on my heart. Give me the thing that I put on the back burner and put on the shelf and said it's too late for me to do it. Lord, give me my dream and help me to dream again. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you. We thank you and praise you, Heavenly Father, for a renewed and rekindled flame in our spirit, hallelujah, that causes us to say, I'm not finished yet. I'll not let my desires, my goals, my dreams, my plans go to the grave before me. I'm going to dream again. I'm going to set my sights on something that I believe God can do, you can do through me and for me. Hallelujah. So that it can give me a platform from which to preach Jesus. Thank you, Father God, for a renewed mind, a rekindled spirit, Hallelujah, and a reignited flame to say, I'm going to dream again. 